See one another once again. We thank God for that. Tonight we're going to look at Revelation chapter 3, verse uh, 17 through 19. Chapter 3 of Revelation, uh, verses uh, 17 through 19. Still dealing with the lukewarm church. Still dealing with the word lukewarm church. Let's pray. Most gracious and all wise Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercy, and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings. You have stored up for us, and even what you yet to do, we thank you. We bless your holy and righteous name. Be in everything we done and said tonight that will bring you honor, bring you glory. Be with me, speak to me, speak through me. As I speak to you, shall be with God. We're in for it to be in prayer, in person, and virtually, God. Be with me and speak to me and speak through me. You be the glory, you be the glory and the honor of the life of me, your servant. Oh, God, keep me ever at the third o'clock and be sensitive to your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray and we do thank you. Amen. Amen. Again, Revelations chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. Still dealing with the lukewarm church. First, I'm going to start off with the, uh, with the New King James Verse. And then I'll do the uh, King James and possibly another one. Verse 17 reads as follows. Mm. Oh, it says, reads like this. I need to cut this down. Mm. 
verse 17 says this because you say this is new king james i am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do <laughs> not know that you are wretched miserable poor blind and naked verse 18 i counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garment that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eyesight that you may see verse 19 the last one as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. That's going to dig. But there's a good nuggets here. I want to call verse 19. I want to call it, you don't realize who you are. You don't realize who you are. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Let me get you some, some things here before I even get into it with the King James. The things I want to just bring out in 17, they were self righteous. They were so uh, focused on uh, earthly treasures. They were worldly, <laughs> worldly fullness self-deception and ignorance of self i'm gonna do the last two four. self deception deceiving their selves the second one ignorance of <laughs> self ignorance of self look at the key things because Thou say it because you say I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. Boy, I don't need nothing. That's what they say. I got everything. We got everything. I don't have no need of nothing. And know it not that thou art, listen to this, and you get all this, but you don't know who you really are. Listen to this. You're a wretched. You're miserable. And poor. Blind and naked. You say you don't need nothing. You say you're rich. And increasing goods. What Jesus is saying here. He said, okay, you say you don't need me. But let me tell you who you really are. Because you're just wretched. Not only you're wretched, but you're miserable. Not only that, but you're poor. And you say you're rich, but you're poor. <laughs> and you're blind and you're naked. Mm. Let me say something here. When Jesus describes them, he describes them who they are. They got, they, 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 and they say they got all that. They say that you're rich, have goods, and don't need nothing. But Jesus said you are spiritually bankrupt. <laughs> you may be rich in the natural, but spiritually, you are bankrupt. And since you're bankrupt, you're you just wretched. You're miserable. You're poor. You're blind. And you're naked. Wow. In the spirit realm, this is what you are. Well, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Ooh, Jesus. Listen to this. When he says, because that's it, Listen to this. You, but you just keep saying you are. You keep, and that's what he said. Because, now say, he said, that's what he's saying. But you keep saying you're rich. But in reality, you're poor. <laughs> uh, listen to this. The other part says, uh, I'm rich and increasing goods and I have no need of nothing. <laughs> you have made money, yeah, 
have acquired wealth, yeah. Have no need of nothing. Have no need of anything. I got everything I need. Well, you got it. Let's dig more, more so here. Uh, let me, before I can do this, now let me, let me go and do this. Therefore, there are two schools of thoughts concerning the cause of the Laocene lukewarmness. One is that it was their prosperity. They had become rich and used their money, what's this, to multiply their possessions. Use their money to multiply their possessions. <laughs> they were so taken up by material, this, this material things. <laughs> That they were neglecting, watch this, that they were neglecting spiritual realities. That they were neglecting spiritual realities. Wow. <laughs> this church suffered no persecution. Wait a minute. This church suffered no persecution. Well, let's do it this way. It served, 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 served uh, had no persecution to a, to a certain extent. Uh, and when I say to a certain extent, because they had all they needed in the material stuff. And they didn't suffer, you know, being poor in the natural. Because they had everything they needed in the natural. So they didn't suffer, suffer persecution in that manner. I will go further, but I'm going to leave that alone for a minute. I may come back to it. Lord said the same. <laughs> it was not troubled by false doctrine. Or even false apostles. <laughs> to the other churches, their situation must have seemed to be inevitable, even ideal. <laughs> to other churches, y'all listen to this. Y'all got it made. Yeah. Wow. Wish I, wish I, I wish I had what you got. <laughs> it made them seem like. Watch this. It made them seem like they were blessed. <laughs> but in reality, they were not blessed. They were not blessed in reality. Watch this. But the Lady Seeing Christians had allowed themselves to become so self satisfied, enjoying a riches and, and things, money. Can buy that they lost, watch this, that they lost their desire for God. Oh my goodness. The, 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 did that, wait a minute. the love of money, the Bible says the love of money is a real what? A uh, evil. That's correct. And so they have lost all interest in the Lord Jesus Christ. They have lost all interest in all spiritual things. Because now they rely on what they had in their prosperity as far as money. But though again, they were spiritually bankrupt. <laughs> oh my goodness. Watch this. They had not learned, what's it? They had not learned how, this is, they had not learned how to be a base. A base means humble. Yes. They knew all about a bound, because a bound means plenty. But they had not experience of being a base. Okay. Let's go. Uh, I didn't have it now, but it just came to me. Philippians. Let's look at chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse number. Let's see here. <laughs> um, look at verse 9. Verse 9, I want to do. No, I don't want to do that. Verse 9. Look at verse 12. Look at verse 12. 
Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. Thank you, Lord. Listen to this. I know, this is Paul talking. I know how to be abased. I know how to be humble. <laughs> and I know how to abound, to have plenty. But everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. <laughs> they had not, not fallen on hard times yet. Y'all know what I said? Yeah. And so since they had not fallen on hard times, they did not know how to be a base. And so they were all in, because it talks about the first part of that, I am rich and increasing goods. That's called arrogance. <laughs> They're not, not only that called arrogance, but that's called pride. Not only is it called uh, arrogance and pride, but it's called self-righteous. Because <laughs> I have no need of nothing. I, 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 I'm, I'm good. And that's what I'm good. I got it. Well, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Listen, let's, let's, let's turn to, uh, let's look at uh, uh, two other scriptures. Because these, these persons were in, 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 in arrogance. They were arrogant. Thought they had it all together. Yes. And all that, but really, in reality, they did not have it all together. Let's look at, look at uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse uh, 19 through 21. Also, Mark 8 and 36. This church was, was the, the, this, the, this being the last church, is a lukewarm church. Um, <laughs> and I told y'all they were in spiritual poverty. And even though in natural, they were rich. They showed they were rich and all that. But in, in reality, they were spiritually. David. Spiritually David. And if you got, if you have it, let's, 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 let's look at Matthew 6 and 9, 19 through 20. Listen to what, he, listen to what Jesus is speaking here. He says this in verse 19 of the 6th chapter of the Gospel of the Matthew, he says this. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Watch this. Where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Wait a minute. We go back to this. That, that, that treasure was earthly. Yeah. It was again, it was not spiritually, it was all earthly. Earthly. And so Jesus says in Matthew's gospel, chapter 6, verse 20, he says, Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Watch this. I like verse 21. It says this For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. <laughs> Their hearts and their treasures were in their goods. Yes. That's where their treasures were. That's where their heart was, was in their goods. And so since they, he knew that their hearts were in that, and he goes back to cause them wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Spiritually. They were in that place spiritually. Wow. You have to stop me at any time. Uh, let's go to Mark 8 and 36. <laughs> 8 and 36. Watch it. We all know this one. What profit? What will it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and lose his own soul. Jesus said, what, what, what profit you have all this stuff? And you lose your soul. 
And that's the way he said, what good does it do to have all this stuff and die and go to hell? <laughs> wow. This is what's going on. This is why this church was lukewarm. Why was it lukewarm? <laughs> Look, he's, if, 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 we'll, we'll, let's go back to the bottom part of this, which says, And knoweth not that thou art wretched and miserable, pitiful, and destitute. And he says, and, and you're poor, you're a beggar. <laughs> you're a beggar. Spirit, in the spirit realm, you're a beggar. You're pitiful spiritually. You're destitute spiritually. Wow. Listen to this. Another view as to cause their warmness is that they what's this, have deceived themselves. Wait a minute. Nobody has deceived them. They deceive themselves. To as to the degree that their spiritual of their spiritual life. <laughs> they consider themselves more spiritual. What, watch it. They consider themselves. But what they say there, they're, they're this arrogance, like I said, arrogance. They consider themselves spiritually more spiritual than others. They needed nothing. In other words, they didn't need God because they already had it. They thought. Yes, yes. Watch this. This can be said. These people did not see themselves as God saw them. Could I just say that again? Because they did not see themselves as God saw them. Because God saw them wretched. Mm -hmm. God saw them miserable. And he saw them poor. He saw them black. And he saw them naked. He saw them this way. They saw themselves, hey, I'm all right. I'm good. But Jesus said, no, you're not good spiritually. You're messed up. you literally messed up spiritually. Wow. Anybody want to add on to your opinion? Yes, ma'am. Scripture, when it talks about a man to gain the world and lose his soul, mm -hmm. I thought about comparing uh, the natural things, they are temporal. Yes. Where the spiritual things are enduring, so it encourages us to recognize that natural wealth truthfully has no spiritual value in it. No. And I thought about when we take that last breath, we see it because everybody come to get the natural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Anybody else? Okay, I'm, I'm going to read this. Then I'm going to verse 18. I told y'all I'm going to hold y'all along. This is it. You say, I am rich. Mm -hmm. I have everything I want. Mm -hmm. I don't need a thing. Exclamation. <laughs> so you don't, wait a minute, listen to this. You don't realize. That you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. You don't realize what you are. As we stated at the, at the, the beginning, you don't realize who you are. And so they didn't realize who they were. They thought they had it all together. And all that, but Jesus, the other word, he, he, he exposes them who they are. He had literally just exposed them when he talks to the latter part of verse 17, exposed them for who they really are. Wow. Wow. Nobody on 18, 17? Let's go to 18 then. Watch 18. <laughs> I want to call 18. I call 18 advi advice or guidance. Advice or guidance. Or, <laughs> or receive from me that you may be better. Or receive from me that you may be better. Watch this. I counsel thee, this is to buy of, the, of me gold tried in the fire. Watch this. I have advised you to buy of me gold that has been tested. <laughs> that thou may be rich. And white raiment, white clothes, that thou mayest be clothed, and that 
the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. Now, let me stop for a moment. Because remember, I just said this from a few moments, just a few months ago. I said exposed. Yeah. He said, so that you will be exposed that you are naked spiritually. Yeah. <laughs> and anoint, listen to this, anoint thine eye with eyesight that thou mayest see. You blind right now. Jesus said, literally, you are blind spiritually. But anoint your eyes with eyesight that you may see. Living, he's in care of the church. He's living in charge of the church at Laodicea. Take my advice. Listen to my words. That you may be, that you may change your whole mindset. That you may change the way you think. And even if that change the way you even feel. Take my advice. Get, take my guidance. I'm trying to, but what's it, what do you literally say? He said, I still love you. Yes. You messed up. You're wretched, you're miserable, poor, naked, and I'm blind, but I still love you. And I want to, for you to change and please listen. Please listen to what I'm going to tell you. Please listen. I got gold. This Lord has been trying to find you. Watch this. There is still hope. There was still hope for Leo yes. to see you. Instead of seeking the world's wealth, they could buy from Jesus <laughs> pure gold that has already been tested, has already been tried, has already been purified from God. Mm. The goal is, women, I want to ask you a question. He uses this word right here, go. Do you know what he, what he, what he means when he says go and then try and test it? You know what he's saying? Anybody know? I'm not sure, but I would think that is a this abundant life or his grace that's free. I'll take that, but I'll leave it something else. Count, I counsel thee to buy. Of me, go try and find. Mm -hmm. Let me say this, Madame. You got him. It ain't, he's not literally talking about gold. Mm -hmm. He's not really talking about gold. But there is something that has been tried in the fire, according to scripture. Mm -hmm. That has the best that we're talking about. Oh. <laughs> you want me to tell y'all? Huh? Say that loud. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. He says, he said, he said, I, have, I, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, try and find. Your faith has been trying to find. I got biblical proof to this. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. And when somebody finds it, read it. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. <laughs> and I'm give it, read into it. It says it's more precious, precious than gold. <laughs> the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire. Might be found until you praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Found praise, honor, and glory at the reveal or the revelation of Jesus Christ. Where the natural gold will perish. Yes. <laughs> That's why Jesus, Jesus told me in 18, back get it from me. It's been tested. And so the thing is. They had no faith in him because they already figured they already had everything. But that stuff's going to perish. That stuff is going to fade away. But your faith in me will not fade because it's already been tested. It's already been tried. So all you got to do is get this faith, get the faith of gold from me that has already been tested, already been tried. Oh, my goodness. He wants, we're going to, 
Jesus really wanted the, 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 the believers to be rich in faith. <laughs> Not rich in natural gold, but rich in faith. Oh my goodness. Woo. Mm. Watch this. Y'all stop me in time. Y'all gonna come and stop me in time. The lay of the sins could also receive from Christ white clothing. Garment. Why this is garments of triumph. Because my faith is sure in Jesus Christ. It's a status and it's been tried in Jesus Christ. And so now I got a garment <laughs> of victory. A garment of triumph in righteousness. Oh my goodness. And you'll find it in, in, in Revelation chapter 19, verse 8. Oh my. This would be. Oh, go ahead. I can I, 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 I pick up from there. Go ahead. I'm just going to put this Yes, that's the revelation. Yes. Oh, I don't know where they are. Almost, almost walked in there. <laughs> but it's something about it. You see, you see uh, uh, several more occasions where revelation will talk about white garment. And I'll just do this way. White garment represents purity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it literally represents purity. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you value the faith, that I will give you a white robe of triumph and righteousness, pure white, if you hold on. And if you trust me and not trust your stuff. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, hey, well, I guess I'm going to go there. Sister Teresa, here it is next. <laughs> oh, this would be their verse through the blood. Of the Lamb, of the Lord Jesus Christ. This, this would be that. This white robe that's washed in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, shall be pure. Oh my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. Woo! Watch this. A righteousness, not their own, but Christ's imputed in them. A righteousness made real in their lives through sanctification of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. This word imputed means credit something to someone else. <laughs> credit something to someone else. Oh my God. From him to us. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's awesome right there. The third point I want to pull out in here is they needed also to buy of Christ a special ornament in order to anoint their eyes with spiritual eyesight. So they might see their, wait a minute, that they may see, listen, they may see their true state. Wait a minute. He says, eyesight. Wait a minute, watch this. And anoint thine eyes. The word thine means anoint your eyes. Yeah. Wait a minute. He ain't talking about the pastor coming on your eyes. He said, You anoint your own eyes with eyesight that you may see. Oh my goodness. That you may see who you are. That you may see your true state. Go back to 17. That you may see your, your, your physical. That you may see you're wretched, that you're poor, that you're blind, that you're naked, that you may see truly who you are. But you have your note your eyes with spiritual eyesight that you may see your true state. Oh my goodness, this is good. Mm. They needed help of the spirit. Wait a minute. They needed help of the spirit, and also not only the spirit, not only of the spirit, but they needed help of the word. Oh my goodness. Uh, mm. in order that they may clearly they may have a clear vision of Christ 
<laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Of heaven and of the things of the things of the spirit. Oh my goodness. Let's, let's, let's turn to, to, to uh, 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 St. John chapter 16, verse 13. St. John chapter 16, verse 13. Verse 13. <laughs> and the things of the Spirit. Watch this. Thirteen says this. Do I want to do it? <laughs> let me let me let me let me do eight. Because the verse eight, the, the, the spirit has to convict you. The spirit has to convict. Before we go to thirteen, let's go to eight. Same sixteen, same gospel. Uh, sixteen chapter of the gospel according to Saint John. Verse eight and thirteen. Verse eight is is is, 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 is conviction, conviction. Verse eight. Listen to this. I'm gonna read from the King James. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin <laughs> and of righteousness and of judgment. He will. The Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. He will mm, convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. <laughs> Watch 13, because the Spirit does not operate on his own. Yes. Can I just say that again? The third person of the Trinity does not operate on his own. Yes. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, 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 yes. has come for the Spirit will convince you of who you are because it talks about here when we read this in verse 18. It really, the outside, really show the person who they really are, the true state. However, he, the spirit of truth, will has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not, watch this, he will not speak on his own authority. There's authority. But he does not speak on his own authority. Uh, but wh whatever he hears, he will speak with it. Whatever he, that means he has to listen to. The third person of the Trinity has to listen to. Oh, Jesus. Mm. And whatever he hears, he will speak. Listen to this. He said, Jesus said, he will not say nothing outside, outside of what he hears from God. <laughs> he will not say nothing outside of God. Well, first of all, before I read the last part of the verse, I see the Holy Spirit being obedient. Amen. If the Holy Spirit has to be obedient, Amen. we must be obedient. Amen. The third person of the Trinity is obedient to God. Can I go further? He's also obedient to even Jesus. Amen. Wow. The last part of this, he will tell you things to come. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. He will tell you things to come. Mm, mm, mm. Anybody want to add on to uh, 18, before I go to 19, the last one? Let me, let me read this. So I advise you, this is, I advise you to buy from me gold that has been purified by fire. Then you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me. So you will not be ashamed by your nakedness. The ointment for your eyes so you can see or so you will be able to see <laughs> you know what he said? You get all of this from me. Mm -hmm. All of this from me. Because all of this you get from me is for your spiritual growth. 
and your spiritual richness. Get all this from me. That's what I want you to have. Wow. Nobody on that? Yes, ma'am. What, 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 Yes. 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 Gave to 18, which was Isaiah 55 1. <laughs> yeah. Said, Hold, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Mm -hmm. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes. Yes, come buy wine, milk without money, without price. To say that he had showed them who they were, mm -hmm. but yet in his long suffering and love for them, yet he's saying, it's, if you just want it, if you just thirst, I'll give it to you. I'll show you who you yeah. are, yes. but you still won't come and get it, and it's free. Yeah. Yeah, don't cost you nothing. Nothing. And the thing is, you said that because of something. Before I said it you buy all, you get all the stuff. Yes. You got to spend to get. Yeah. When you come to me, you ain't got to spend nothing. Yeah. But you get. <laughs> yes, you just got to be thirsty. Mm -hmm. Got to be thirsty. Anybody else? Okay, I'm going to go to 19 then. The last one. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, let me do the last one. I'll put this something else there. Okay. Before I go to 19. No, no, I'll leave that alone. Look at 19. Short. But now, as many, listen, as, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. <laughs> I call verse 19 correction that leads to repentance. Correction that leads to repentance. He said, as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Then the word, let's look at this word review. In, in, in this, this word review. This word review means watch out, point out. <laughs> point out fault. That's what we say in the first point is the eight point is that as many as I love, I love you, but I gotta rebuke you. I gotta, I gotta point out what's wrong with you. <laughs> I gotta show, I gotta show you what's wrong with you. I love you though, but I gotta show you so you get better. See, not only does he say rebuke, but I and chastise or chasten. And the word chasten means I gotta point out with you what's wrong with me, and I also gotta correct what's wrong with you. Now, wait a minute. You gotta allow me to want to do this to you, or for you rather. You gotta allow me to do it. You gotta allow me to rebuke and point out what's wrong with you. You gotta allow me to point out and correct you. And then when this is happening, you be zealous. Therefore, I can then repent. <laughs> That's what he said. The rebuke and chasing will lead to repentance if you have the right heart. <laughs> if we have the right heart. Mm. The very fact that Jesus rebuked and disciplined the lay of the sins. So he still loved them. <laughs> His love here is a love of affection. Because if he did not have a love of affection, he would not correct it. He would not point out their shortcomings. But he loved them so much, he wants the development of the spiritual woman to be better. Oh my goodness. Watch this. <laughs> The love here is a love of affection. And he says, I 
I is in fact. <laughs> the father chastens and this one, every son he, re he receives. Mm. Every son he receives. He chastens to make them better. Ah, to make, what can I just wait? To make the daddy proud of his son or his daughter. Jesus, Jesus' love is like the father's love in this. Rebuke is the same word as reprove. <laughs> Use of the Holy Spirit. And I think we just read it. I just got myself ahead of myself. Work of the Spirit in John 16 and 8. Because the Spirit convicts. Amen. It convicts. Watch this. It, it includes the idea of expose. Because he's actually he's exposing them mm -hmm. by the pointing out their wrong. And then he uh, uh, reproves them as well as expose them. He refutes, he shows them they're guilty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the spirit convicts and convinces by reproof. Jesus rebuked the lay of the sins, just as the Holy Spirit rebukes the world of lukewarm or cardinal Christians today. Cardinal Christians today. Mm. There was hope and there is hope. For the lay of the sins, if they would, women, if they, there is hope only if they would repent. Amen. And without repentance, there is no hope. But if the lay of the sin church repents, there is hope. Oh my, that's good. There is hope. Jesus urged them to arouse themselves out of their lukewarmness to be zealous. Mm. If they delay, if they continue in their spiritual <laughs> state, they will still be where they are. This would, would indeed spew them out of his mouth. Let me read that one. Because they're lukewarm. They're not hot nor they're cold. But because they're lukewarm, he's going to spew them out of his mouth. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Repentance would mean a change. Repentance would mean a change of attitude and a change of heart. A change of attitude and a change of heart. That's what repentance is. Turn from and turn to. Yes. Oh my goodness. They must become <laughs> hot, on fire for the Lord instead of lukewarm. They must recognize their true condition. Yeah, that's that's recovery right there. When we when we when we recognize our true condition and he the warning and the challenge the Lord was giving them they must commit themselves to a continuing zeal for the Lord and to represent him well because I go back to 17 they did not represent Christ well at all Yes. Anybody, anybody want 19? Yes, ma'am. Men are likely to support the scripture for 19. Uh -huh. Job 5, 17. <laughs> yes. For it says, Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects. Yes. Therefore, do not despise the chastening of the Almighty in the way he's just expounded on that. How much he loved them, mm -hmm. he loved us. Exactly. Because in my growth, uh, there were times, I'm going to be honest, when I was uh, correct, when I was chastened and made me cry, I was sorry for it too. But I figured that I was trying. But as I've grown and still is, I realized it's how much he loved me. Yes. It's how much he loved us. Yes. And he wanted to correct us that we would just be where he wants us to be. Exactly. You know? 
But just a blessing, because sometimes I've known us, we had kind of stuck out of my heart when we got chased in the collective. Got a little upset. Yes. But it, 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 it's, it's like a parent with a child. It's yes. for your good. Yes. I, I, I love you, but it's, this is for your good. Yes. yes. And that's what the parents say to the child. I don't, I don't want you to stay in this state. Amen. Because staying in this state is not a good for you. Mm -hmm. And but I want you to change that you may be in a better state and that you may mature and be all, what is the parents saying, that I desire you to be. Mm -hmm. And so God said the same thing. Yeah. I need you. I'm pointing out to you because I love you. Mm -hmm. I'm correcting you because I love you. Mm -hmm. And I want you to be better. I want you to be all that you are supposed to be spiritually. So I got to correct you. Mm -hmm. That you may be zealous. Mm -hmm. And that all I need to do is repent and turn from that way. And, 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 and get more of me. Get more of me. Get more of me. Yeah, get more of me. Anybody else? Does that mean you can do? Yes. So after he has rebuked us and chased in us, he's still saying, you just respond, I love you like a pan. But then he said, okay, you got it. Now be quick, yeah. eager, fool, yeah. and repent and get in line. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the, 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 the word that he said, you say is a deal. Mm -hmm. You got to maintain that. Yes. This is work. Amen. This word, Zayus or zeal, it's work. Because you gotta, you gotta fight to the nail, keep that. Because there, there's an enemy out there that wants you to be Zayus. There's an enemy out there that does not want you to be eager. Eager to mature, eager to grow, eager to be who God called you to be. And he's gonna fight us to the nail that we don't keep that zeal or that Zayus. This. And, and then we'll just turn from that. And God is saying to us tonight, Keep it. Yes. Now, how do you keep it? I'm going to ask them. We got to keep that in prayer. We literally got to keep it in prayer and in word. In prayer and in word. God, help me keep this Zayas spirit, this Zayas attitude, this Zayas lifestyle. Help me to maintain it. And I'm going to what I said a few weeks ago. This has got to be intentional. Amen. You got to intend to do this. <laughs> You gotta have purpose and be on do this on purpose. Yes, intentional. And maintain. 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 Anybody else? Because I'm done. I'm done. All right. We will not have nothing next. We will do about something next week because we will have Watch Night Friday. But I want us to resume 19. Through 22. No, I'm, I'm a bit wrong. I'm in John. I'm still in John. <laughs> I'm still in John. Don't do that, y'all. <laughs> uh, I want to finish up chapter 3. 22 through 22. I want to finish that up. I want to finish up. That finishes up the lukewarm church. But then when for chapter 4, I want to go into the the throne room of heaven. Mm. Chapter 4 is, I think, the first six or seven verses talks about the throne room, the throne room of heaven. Mm. The throne room of heaven. But we got to, and we got the next. We'll finish up chapter 3. Finish up also the lukewarm church. And also we'll finish up all the seven churches as well. This was good. This was good. I was, even when I, I, I read it, read it, read it for when it was visited this, there's some things I didn't see, I didn't see before. It would be especially set in churches and, 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 and uh, how they were, how they operated. Uh, it, was, it was very uh, eye opening of how the churches were, but still at the end, how God still loves each other. Amen. Still love each one. He, he, he exposed who they were, but he still loved them. He still loved them. And he's gonna end, he's gonna end the seventh church like he did for the other six. <laughs> yes. Are there any prayer requests? Yeah? Okay.
Just one prayer. Most gracious and all wise Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercy, and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings you have stored upon us, and even what you yet to do. We thank you. We thank you for who you are. We can make you you are everything. You are all in all. I pray, God, that you'll bless me, your people, you strengthen us, you shape us, you mold us, you guide us, you direct us, make us the people you call from these last and evil days. Oh, God, you strengthen us where we weep. Build us up where we're torn down. Make us stronger, make us better for your glory and your honor. Oh, God, it's all about you. All about you, God. And as we have learned in weeks past about these churches, God, help us to be the people. It's not so much the building, God, it's the people of the church. Help us, God, to be the people you're calling for that live a life that is pleasing unto you. And help us, God, to submit to your correction that we may be better. Help us to God in the name of Jesus. Bless all of our sick, name by name, and one by one, I speak and declare healing and health be upon the bodies of our sick. Oh, God, those that are going through, lift the burden, lift the load, God. You send your word in Matthew chapter 11, my yoke is easy, and my burden are light. Oh, God, lighten the load. Lift the burden, God. Meet the needs of your people, God. Open doors for your people, God. You are your home tyrant. You are the provider, God. Move by your mighty hand and move by your mighty power. Touch in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray, God, that you bless our officials of the world. Guide them, direct them in their decision making, God. Make the right decisions for the people of the country, God. Oh, God, I pray that you just bless and move by your mighty hand and your mighty power. Oh, God, I pray that you just bless uh, the doctors and the nurses, God, who have been overwhelmed with persons coming to the hospital, God. I pray that you give them strength, God. Bless them in a mighty and an abundant way in the name of Jesus. God, I pray, God, that you will also protect them, God, as well as they're, 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 they're treating and, and ministering to the sick, God. I pray that you will keep them protected, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you bless a young man who uh, spoke to me today uh, who's going through some health issues. Touch his body with your mighty hand of healing from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, God. Move by your mighty hand and move by your mighty power, God. I pray, God, to bless our upcoming service, God. We pray you be in everything you done said that will bring you honor and bring you glory, God. Oh, God, that we'll just, just set to the room with your anointing, fill your presence. Your shall come and glory, God. Go up and down every aisle, every pew, and anoint afresh in the name of Jesus. Bless the one who brings the word on Sunday, God. Be with her and speak to her, God. And God, bless the one who brings the word on New Year's Eve. Be with her and speak to her as well, God. Bless the both of God. You give God to your glory and your honor. Oh, God, speak, God, through them, God, in a mighty and abundant way, God, that we, your people, may be blessed through your word, through them, God. Oh, God, so you leave your house, you are very sweet, get in every vehicle, bind every mechanical problem, dispatch your angels round right by with your people, cover us in your blood, and we pray, travel mercies, these blessings we ask in Jesus, and we pray that we do thank you. Amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you. This is our prayer. Blessings to you, the people of God. Blessings.